It's October and you know what that means, Halloween and all of the fun spooky decor that comes with it. Here are three quick, easy and affordable home decor craft projects that you can do in well under one hour and for less than $5 each. When I saw this pumpkin at the Dollar Tree, I knew I wanted to do something with fabric. I started by giving it a quick coat of paint in a combination of orange and brown. Here's the video. Yeah, somehow I flipped my phone to selfie mode so the entire video is of my ceiling. Anyway, I looked for Halloween fabric at Dollar Tree, but they didn't have any so I opted for this witch and bat scarf. Unfortunately, it wasn't wide enough for the witches to be upright, but I'm not mad with the witches being sideways. Maybe they had a little bit too much Halloween potion. I cut a piece a bit larger than the pumpkin and then decided it definitely needed to be ironed. So while I'm ironing, I want to share this cool painting hack for the stem. I would like to share the video, but of course, it's also part of the Ceiling Chronicles. I saw on someone's channel and I feel terrible that I don't know whose, but you basically just put a heavy layer of paint on the stem and drag a toothpick through it to create the texture. I think this is just so clever. Anyway, now that the fabric is ironed, I added a light layer of Mod Podge to the pumpkin and placed the fabric on top. I then took my shears and trimmed all the way around. A hint is to angle the scissors a bit towards the top edge of the wood. It makes it easier to follow the edge and gives you a cleaner cut than if you ran the scissors flush against the edge. I then added a heavy coat of Mod Podge, paying special attention to the edges so it doesn't lift when dry. After the Mod Podge dried, it was time to add the eyes and mouth. If I had gotten back to Dollar Tree, I would have picked up some black vinyl, but since I hadn't, I opted for scrapbook paper. Now friends, I am definitely not an artist, and apparently I have forgotten geometry. I thought I could cut a square and end up with two matching triangles. While that technically is true, the triangles are in no way the shape I wanted. I ended up cutting a rectangle, marking the center, then eyeballing the cuts. These did, however, turn out much better. The mouth is a completely different story. I have zero idea why I could not cut a simple jack-o'-lantern mouth that any third grader could do with ease. I literally had a sample sitting right in front of me. In the end, I just couldn't do it and opted for an open mouth. How hard could an oval be? Well, not as hard as a jack-o'-lantern mouth, but not as easy as I thought. And I ended up essentially putting it on sideways because if you look at an open mouth, it's long and narrow, not short and white. Oy vey. Anyway, I finished my jack-o'-lantern by outlining the eyes and mouth with a glow-in-the-dark paint and added a wire curl and a few leaves. The wire is a hanger off a sign I'm using for another project, and the leaves were left over from some sunflowers I used for a project last month. I'm definitely a saver. Overall, in spite of the weird mouth, I do love this piece. If you're feeling inspired, I hope you'll give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to join the Koala Crew so you don't miss another video. Now let's get back to crafting. When I picked up this jack o lantern at the Dollar Tree, I knew I wanted to do something different with the eyes and the mouth and actually was thinking about using tissue paper. However, after using this metallic netting for some sunflower projects, I decided it would be the perfect addition to this jack o lantern. I painted the pumpkin with the same combination of orange and brown paint that I used for the fabric pumpkin. And yeah, uh, that video was part of the Epic Ceiling Chronicles. Anyhow, I used Mod Podge to affix the netting, using quite a bit to make sure it adhered well to the wood. I did decide to use three layers of netting so that yellow really popped. I finished the piece by adding a small amount of moss along the bottom. I wanted to add a curly Q stem, so I used a metal hanger from another sign. I hot glued the twisted wire and a small amount of moss to the base of the stem, and this actually turned out even better than I had envisioned. It looks super cute in a lit room, and a little tea light in the back gives it an eerie look in the dark. I love these signs, which come in a pack of two from the Dollar Tree. They actually would look great grouped together on your wall, no DIY required. However, one of my favorite creators, Caitlin from Crafts by Caitlin, made these into a tabletop sign, and I decided to do something similar. Caitlin's version was only one-sided, but I decided to do a double-sided piece. I have a half wall between my living room and dining room, so having double-sided decor means I don't have to decide which room gets the backside view. I removed the wires from the signs and saved them for other projects, including the two other projects in this video. These dowels came from Michaels, and I spray-painted them black. And speaking of spray-painting, 
In hindsight, I do wish I had done a quick spray of the backs of the signs. Anyway, I glued the signs to the dowels. Initially, I was going to just use hot glue, but I decided to add E6000 to the mix just for added strength. The signs are not heavy, but since they would be upright, I wanted to be sure they would not fall off the dowels. The next step was to place them in these buckets that I got at the Target Dollar Spot. You want to put styrofoam of some sort in the buckets. If you're picking up something from Dollar Tree, a rectangle floral block probably will work better than the tapered discs because the discs are a bit too wide. I used some styrofoam left over from another project, cutting it into smaller blocks and using hot glue to bond them together. I then attempted to place the dowels in the styrofoam, which frankly seemed easier than it was. I ended up using a pencil to do a starter tunnel, and I admit I had a really tough time pulling the pencil out of the styrofoam. The final touch was adding these marbles to the pail to cover the styrofoam and also add weight to the pail. Full disclosure, I really didn't have anything specifically purchased for this purpose. I believe you can get black rocks at Dollar Tree, which I would have preferred, but I never made it there to make the purchase. I planned to use rocks from my backyard and even considered painting them black, but then I saw these dark blue marbles that I have in a vase in my living room, a much easier option. They ended up being darker in the pail than I expected and I'm quite happy with this choice and with the final look. I really love how these projects turned out and I hope that you're feeling inspired. Here are some more quality videos to keep your creative juices flowing. Thanks so much for watching and I hope that you have a quality day.